everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I am super excited to share with you all about birth control. I say it like that because for me, um, it is something that I don't normally speak about publicly because I feel like so many people have so many opinions about birth control. And at the same time, it is something that has been a key a key player in the timeline for me in order to be my most authentic self and my most independent, badass version of Brittany, um, my birth control. I, I, I give it some of these props. Um, and I get a lot of you asking me about it, about birth control, what do I do, how do I deal with stuff, stuff, and just kind of my opinion on things. And so I'm sharing this with you, and I, I really want to put a huge disclaimer here. This is what works for me. You need to listen to your body and do what works for you. So do not say to yourself, Brittany does this, so it must work for me. No, 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 no. The way that I found the best birth control for me is because Contrary to what everyone else was saying around me, I listened to what my body was telling me to do, and I did that, and it worked out for me. Um, Most people are just, most women, I'll speak, I'm speaking to you women, because we're talking about birth control here. Uh, Most women are very disconnected from our bodies. So, you know, you're raised in an environment where, like suppress emotions, suppress, like take a pill when you're on your period, just, and a lot of it is because we need to, in, in the matrix that is the world today, it is not necessarily set up to be flowy and to accommodate and create a safe space for women in their cycles. And we have the most beautiful cycles when we are given the space to drop in and really connect to ourselves. When we are on our period, our time of the month, our moon, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is like, this is the moment of possible creation. So you have this time period where you can literally make new life. And in that vortex of, of your body being open to creating new life, you are also way more connected to source. So, here on Copenhagen, where a lot of my girlfriends are very into following their moon cycle, tracking it, they will go out when they're bleeding to the waterfall and just bleed on the rocks and connect to nature and have the most beautiful time connecting to their bodies and getting the downloads because this is the, the moment when they feel the most connected to their bodies. I find that really beautiful. Um, When I came to Copenhagen, I, you know, I, how do I, I'm like, where do I start with this? When I came to Copenhagen, I found it really beautiful how connected women were to their bodies, to their monthly cycles, to their moon, to their period. And At the same time, I have a very unique connection to my body, which I feel is very different than a lot of the spiritual community. It's I don't. It's like hard to put into words. Is why I have never talked about it publicly, Um, because I'll just start from like how I got my birth control. So, you know, I got married when I was eighteen. I was a virgin when I got married, and. I grew up, you know, in a very suppressed environment where the religion I grew up in, Jehovah's Witness, it wasn't, it's not like Mormons where you're encouraged to like pop out a ton of babies or like, you know, some of the Hasidic Orthodox. um, It's not like that in the sense when it comes to, I'm talking about baby making, um, but it is very suppressing of women. And, and so you know, if you do have a kid, it's just kind of like, okay, the, the, whoever's like the woman in the family, the wife, she just becomes the, the baby maker and the mother and, you know, stays at home with the kid and the guy goes to work and it's very traditional. And I just knew about myself that I was not, I just had, even from a very young age, like 
you know, I graduated high school when I was 16. I skipped a bunch of grades and I moved out when I was 17. And so I had like a year of living on my own before I met my husband, my future husband. And then we got married six months after we met classic. Um, and I just knew that like, this was not a time period where I wanted to even have the idea of popping out children. Like I was like, I had been so controlled my whole life by my father and I emotionally was taking care of both of my parents and my sisters growing up. And I wanted a time where I was a kid. Like I was like, I need to, I was like doing whatever I could subconsciously to get free. And I was just like, I need to do whatever gives me the most amount of freedom in my life. And popping out a child at 18 was not in the cards for me. Like, I was like, no fucking way am I going to have kids. My future husband, on the other hand, came from a very large family who were all also Jehovah's Witnesses. And he was he was four years older than me, so it wasn't creepy. Uh, it also wasn't an arranged marriage, but it was, like, very encouraged from the moment you started dating. They started asking you, like, when are you going to get married? And then it was just very cookie cutter, like... You go on a first date. They're like, so when are you going to get married? And then you go on like, you know, you get that's like it's very encouraged to rush everything within this religion because they don't want people to sleep outside of marriage, to have sex with each other outside of marriage. It's like you can get kicked out of the religion for this. So they just like really push you to go very fast. And also, side note, when you're in a cult and both sides of your family are like he his whole family was in the religion my whole family was in the religion when you get married you're kind of like locked in even more and if you have a kid in that you're locked in even more so it's also part of that agenda um and anyway so i met <laughs> my ex-husband's name is Ryan and the first time like he was the first guy i ever went on a date with is the person I married six months later, which is so funny. So anyways, I'm not going to go into my relationship with him. That's not important in this episode. Just know that he's a Capricorn. He was great in the, in the best way that he could. He ended up becoming an alcoholic and trying to kill himself when I left him and trying to blame it on me and not becoming the best person. But at the moment when we got together, he was great. And I think he did the best he could within our relationship. So, my sister and my mom were both on the pill and, or they, they were, they had moments where they were on the pill and my mom, my mom got pregnant with me when she was on the pill, like her doctor. Also side note, if you don't know this, doctors don't tell people, tell women this, that if you're on the pill and you take antibiotics, a lot of times that cancels out your birth control. This is how I popped into the timeline. My mom was on the pill, faithfully taking it for years. She had my sister who was two years old, or my sister and I are almost exactly two years apart. My older sister and I. And my mom got pregnant with me. So she had like a one, like a one year old. Yeah, my sister and I are like one year and nine months apart. So um, anyways, the doctor did not tell her that when you're on the pill, antibiotics cancel it out. So all I knew was looking at my older sister who was already married and my mom who were on the pill, both of them were like hormonally crazy when they were on the pill. Like they had a lot of, actually my parents put my sister on the pill when she was a teenager because she had really bad acne and back then they were just like putting you on the pill for anything. So she had been on it for like years and it was, it like made her depressed and, and like just a lot of really bad side effects, like huge mood swings. And also my mom, like she, she was really having a hard time with it. And, um, my, my older sister, um, this happens later in the, in my timeline, but I'll just tell you now, like when she actually wanted to get off of the pill and get pregnant, it took her three years to get her cycle back in order. Like she was really wanting to have kids and it took her three years and she ended up and she like worked for the hospital and she was like doing all this research. Like, why is this fucking with my system so much? And then she was visiting my grandparents and found out that she was like three months pregnant 
um, my, the, the women in my family don't show pregnancy until about six months. Like my mom always jokes that we have baby making hips, <laughs> which I find hilarious. Um, I'm always like, mom, that's gross. Like I'm not here to make babies. Um, my mom, my mom is the kind of person who loves being a mom. Like that is her favorite job in the whole world. And she does it with all of her heart. She, like, I literally would come home and she would have like a plate of like freshly baked cookies. She also ran a bakery for fun and she just loved like painting and doing photography and, you know, making us like really amazing, cool clothes. Like I would find her clothes in like a fashion magazine and she would go and like make them for me and they would look exactly like in the magazine and people would ask me where I got them. And I always have this dream that my mom and I will make a clothing company one day, a clothing line. <clears throat> Anyways, lots of side stories here. Um, but all I knew intuitively was that I was not getting on the pill. Like I saw that it fucked up the women in my family. And also my aunt, she, my aunt was like suicidal when she was on the pill. They had to put her in the psych world. Like I have depression that runs through my family, which another side note, I feel like depression is actually when people are just being so suppressed for so long. And then that goes through the generations and people just keep doing it. So I always find it really interesting when people say, like I have said in the past, oh yeah, depression runs in my family when I really should have said like, yeah, suppression runs in my family and people are just doing their best to deal with it. Um, anyways, so I knew I was not going to get on the pill. And then, uh, a friend of mine who was also married, a lot of people are married in the religion I grew up in because basically since the moment you're 18, you probably just get married. Uh, and so she was, she was like five years older than me and I was living with her and her husband. They're friends of mine. They're kind of like my big brother and sister in the timeline, like spiritual brother and sister. And she had what's called a IUD Marina. So it's like where you put it in for five years and it's hormonal. And for her, it, it was like working really well. And I had never heard of this before. This is another thing. I grew up where I wasn't allowed to watch TV Thankfully, I read books. I was allowed to watch, re read books because my dad read books. Otherwise, normally that was also really restricted. And you're only supposed to really like read like religious books and pamphlets and stuff. And so I was very sheltered from the world. I didn't, I wasn't like given my options. I didn't really understand how the outside world worked. I went to a public school, thank Jesus. I say that ironically um, because... Most of the kids around me actually were homeschooled, so they were even more, like, s sheltered. Um, but when it came to, like, sex, sex, sex education, I got whatever they gave us in, like, sixth grade health class, and that was about it. No one talked to me about birth control, about sex in my family. Like, I remember the day I got married, my older sister took me aside and was just trying to talk to me about sex. And I was so programmed to be, like, ashamed of sex and my sexuality that I just kind of laughed her off and was like, I don't want to talk about this. And I really thank her for, like, trying to help me and give me some heads up of, like, what it's like. But I mean, when I, when I say that the way I was raised was like the handmaid's tale, like that show, I'm not really joking. Like emotionally, that's how it felt in my, my body and in my vortex. And imagine a lot of people are still in this religion. There's 10 million active Jehovah's witnesses around the world. Um, uh, so anyways, so my friend told me about the IUD Marina. So I go to the doctor and I ask him, can I get this? And he was like, yeah, I can. Uh, yes, you can. Um, so I have, I schedule an appointment and my mom comes with me. And so my mom is telling me like, are you sure you want this? Like the hormonal stuff is not good. I, my mom is like secretly a witch, even though she's in the religion and she got off the pill and she was like, swear she will never take anything hormonal or chemical. Like growing up, we weren't really given like painkillers my mom would like make us tea or give us herbs and stuff I mean we went to the doctor when we needed to so it wasn't crazy but it was like if she could try the you know the if she could do the like the healthy what what is the word brain my brain's not working if she could do like the natural way first she would 
And so for me, she really, she was like, are you sure you want to take hormones? You saw how it works for the women in our family. And I was like, I do not want babies. This is like the, it said it was like 0.0001% chance of getting pregnant. And even then it was like, you would get pregnant in your fallopian tube and then they would have to like remove it because you really couldn't have a baby, which would be traumatic. But uh, I'd never heard of anyone having that happen. And still to this day, I don't know anyone. I'm sure there's cases, of course. Um, but I knew that in my body, I did not want kids. And I knew that there wasn't that many options because I didn't, honestly, I didn't know of any more options. I knew of the pill and condoms and no one else was giving me any more options. So, um, I said, yeah, I really want to do this. And she said, okay, I'll come with you. And, um, it was one of the few times she gave me like an ibuprofen, which is like painkiller. Um, so I took that and she gave me a glass of wine, which I find hilarious because my mom, like if you knew my mom, she doesn't hand out glasses because I was also 18. I was underage, all these things, but I felt like there was like a secret thing my mom and I were doing. Okay. Um, so we went to the doctor. Uh, it was a guy who put it in, which I didn't. So I didn't tell him this doctor that I was a virgin. I had been uh, raped when I was like eight, between eight and 12 years old by my neighbor. Um, so I didn't like my hernia was already torn or whatever. So I didn't bleed or anything. So he didn't know until afterwards. And he was like, I'm really sorry that I did this because I didn't want your first experience to be, um, like, basically he's like, I don't give IUDs to people who are there, who are virgins because, you know, you don't want, he was like, I don't want your first experience to be someone putting like a metal cause they have to like put this metal thing in to like be able to put it all the way up. And I will tell you that it was traumatic in a way, but I was in mission mode to not have babies. So I was like, I think, and I think I intuitively like just didn't tell him. <laughs> um, and it was fine. It like hurt for like one day because I just felt like sore or whatever. And also, you know, there is that part of my womb who's like, what the fuck? Like she's like talking to me like, what is going on? Why, why are things being put up here? Um, and then I just, I don't know. I just, I had this intuition that my ex-husband like really wanted to have kids and I really didn't want to have kids. And so I was, it was a very big like moment of me choosing to be a sovereign being like a independent soul in the timeline who got to be in control of my own body and what happens to my body. Um, so for me, it felt very empowering to get it. And I was like really happy that my mom was there. And so this is when I was 18 and it lasts for five years. Um, it actually lasts for longer. Like, um, I have, friends who are doctors in Africa and they actually leave it in the women for like seven to 10 years. But after five years, this is something to know This pertains later in the timeline of my story, but after five years, the hormones start tapering off uh, and they release less and less of the hormones in your body. So like a uh, IUD Marina, it basically creates the, it creates the, the, environment as if you are already pregnant so your body thinks that you are you do not need to bleed anymore you don't need like when you're bleeding every month it's your lining of your uterus coming off and like refreshing so that the next month it's fresh in case you want to pop out a baby i hope that everything i'm saying scientifically is accurate but I, from according to everything i know this is this is real according but you could please look all of these things up i'm telling you a story that works for me and so I got it in when I was 18 and it took like a couple months, probably like six months of like spotting, like during the normal month. My cycle is very uh, regular for ever since I've had, I've had a, a period since I was 10 to 18, like a normal cycle every month. And it would always come on the 20th of every month, like, like clockwork. And I would have like one or two days of pain, soreness, and then I was fine. 
And so for me, I was always like very connected and in tune with my body and I knew exactly what it needed and what was happening and I would just flow with it, you know? And so for about six months during my period, I would still have like the emotional, um, you know, feelings as if I am on my monthly cycle. Uh, but I would get less and less of like a bleeding every month to the point where after about six months, it went away completely. And, and then I got it replaced every five years, um, all the way into now, which is now I've had my birth control. And so hold on, I want to just speak. It has been fucking amazing for me. So again, this is my story. I'm sharing what's working for me. I have felt so in my power that, you know, through all of my six years of marriage, I got to decide whether I got pregnant or not, not my ex-husband. And then after that, when I was exploring my sexuality, I was always very safe with sex. I've never had an STD, um, but I have been able to explore with this feeling that I feel like most men have um, that, you know, they don't have to worry about getting pregnant. Like I've, I've never had to worry that I was pregnant. I had one time in my early twenties where I felt like I was pregnant and I even went to the doctor and got like a professional pregnancy test and he said no. And then I had this astrology reading done like last year and they were like, pointing out this very specific time in my early 20s and they were like are you sure you didn't have a kid during this time like a soul was trying to come through and I was like nope no 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 so I think a soul there was the opportunity for that but I I have too many things to do in the timeline right now and that's the thing with kids like I love children I know that I will have my own babies one day um, but right now I am the kid and I have my community is my children you know like I have so much energy to do the work that is meant to be done and I feel like because I have had this this um, control over whether I'm gonna create a baby or not I have been able to create so many more things in the world and another thing is that the hormones release like steadily right so in the past like when I had my eight years of a normal cycle before I got this birth control my emotional reality was very, very up and down. And um, since I have had this birth control, my emotional reality is very steady. It's like, yes, I feel sad around the 20th of the month. Yes, I still slow down and I nap a lot. And I am very, I got my hot water bottle, but I don't, I actually don't feel any pain in my body from my monthly cycle. And I don't feel any physical pain. And my emotional reality is so steady. Um, And also I've been able to enjoy so much pleasure from men and women um, without, well, I say that just because I have been with women, but I'm saying specifically from men without ever having to worry that it will lead to a baby. And this is something that I feel like most women have never experienced. The idea that you could enjoy pleasure for, you know, I'll say it now it's been, I don't know, like over 10 years of, I don't have to worry about ever having a child. It just, it like puts so much power in my womb and so much, uh, pleasure in my body. I think I can relax on a level that I feel like most women, um, even if it's intuitively and subconsciously cannot relax because they're still like worried. What if, what if there's a baby? What if this happens? What if the condom breaks? What if, you know, no one told me that antibiotics cancels out the pill, like all these what ifs, I don't have to deal with that. And so I just vibe. Another thing is that for, and again, this is all for me within my own body, but when for me over the course of this last, like, 10 years or over 10 years of me having this birth control, I have, whenever I've wanted to be sexually turned on, like I am ready for it. Whereas I know that for a lot of my girlfriends who are on their normal monthly cycle, 
There's very specific windows when they're ovulating, especially, um, and when they're not on their period. Like, you know, there's like, there's the cycle and there's very specific times when they are not, their body is like, get the fuck away from me. I do not turned on. I do not want to be touched. And for me, when I want to be touched, I am always ready to be touched. My body is always ready for it. And so I have enjoyed a lot of pleasure. Let's just put it that way. I think body counts are really fucked up, but I will tell you um, that I have connected with so many amazing men in the timeline and just had such great adventures and pleasure and connection and love and all of it. I don't have to think about babies. It's just like, what the fuck? This is so amazing. And it, it, um, I was talking to a, a spiritual woman that is my mentor of mine. And she's like, you're kind of like this hybrid then because, you know, you have the emotional reality of like most men. Like I still feel everything. I'm so fucking sensitive. I still feel everything. But I don't have this super high up and down where I feel out of control crazy, you know, in my emotional reality. So I'm more like a man in my like steady, my steady, steady, steady emotions and also more like a man in the sense that I don't have to worry about getting pregnant. And this just like opens the possibility to create so much more in the timeline. And I have so much more energy. Like my energy is just stable. Um, and I'm a generator. So I, like I wake up every day and I'm just like, I got the energy and I'm like, do, do, you know, doing all the things. So it's been great. So I will say that for me, Having the IUD Marina has been fucking amazing and I'm so grateful for it. Um, I have had so many friends that find out. I don't talk about this very much because I have so many friends, since, especially since moving to Koh Banyang, uh, who are very into natural birth control. They don't, even, they don't even use condoms. They like just track their cycle and like, okay, we can have sex these days. I see these are some of my best girlfriends in the whole world and I love them and I'm so grateful that they are doing whatever works for them and their body and I never judge them and also I just don't speak about what I use because I still feel some judgment from them that somehow I even had one of my best friends tell me that somehow this is disconnecting me from my intuition and my womanhood and my my connection to my womb because I have this hormonal birth control and I really thought about that for a long time and I actually kind of got convinced that maybe this was true or like you know I, I never knew what it was like to be an adult female in a female body without this type of birth control and I was like what if I'm like way more witchy what if I have more psychic abilities what if you know what if I'm more connected to my emotions and so um remember I was telling you that like the, this birth control gives you hormones for five years and then it slowly starts tapering off the hormones uh, and then you take it out between seven and ten years if you want to do that. And when Faraday and I first started dating, I so it still acts as birth control. I just want to put that out there. So I still, at this moment, I'm not worried about having kids. Um, but when Faraday and I started dating, uh, about six months later, I hit the five-year mark. So um, this is last March. I hit the five year mark of my hormones. So the hormones started tapering off. I was, you know, when Faraday and I met, he's like the first guy I ever really considered, you know, somewhere in the timeline, not immediately ever, like not immediately at all. Um, was I thinking to have a children, children with him, but it was like, it was on my mind. Like, okay, this is someone that I think I can build a life with. I feel like this is the love of my life. Like, you know, we are here in the timeline to create beautiful things and maybe a baby is one of those in the future. And so I was like, okay, the hormones or the hormones are starting to taper off. And I would, I actually had had girlfriends get their IUD, the hormonal IUD taken out. And it was this hard cut of like lots like hormones and then no hormones. And so I thought like their body had a really hard time adjusting back. And so I thought, okay, if I'm going to see what it's like, to not go off, not be on hormonal birth control, I would rather my body taper off uh, the hormones. So like between five and seven years of having this birth control, it will just slowly decrease the amount of hormones that it releases in your body. So it has been a year of this. And I will tell you that I have been so fucking emotional, so fatigued, just like 
wanting to sleep for an entire week, uh, really depressed and, and just like the first time in my life where I feel like emotionally crazy. And also I have felt that I can't take psychedelics because normally I'm the most grounded person. I have gone off into the jungle by myself and taken eight grams of mushrooms and I was totally fine. And I was like, you know, I was tripping, but I was grounded in myself and grounded in my body. And when Freddie and I started dating, I think it is also him and I, our vibration is like very high when we are together. Um, and also I think it is the hormones starting to act up. So no one really had a solid answer for me until recently of what happens to your body when it starts tapering off the hormones. And then finally, I talked to someone recently who's a doctor and they know what they're talking about. And they said, okay, Uh, because I was like, they leave them in Africa in the women for like seven to 10 years and the birth control is great and all this stuff is great. And this is what got explained to me. It's like, yes, for women in Africa who maybe um, they are, you know, they have more of a chill life. They're just they're They are doing their thing. They're not like, uh, how do I, basically they were saying that their bodies might be more okay with the hormones like tapering off. But also I'm like, is anyone doing studies of this, of women in Africa? Maybe they're also having hormonal craziness. But basically they were saying like for me, who is very in tune with my body and suddenly the hormones are tapering off, my body will start course correcting like hardcore to like basically expel this foreign object that is in my body. And cause you leave it in your body for five years. Um, and and also be giving me a lot more hormones to try and equal equalize whatever has just happened. And so I think this is what was happening to me. It was, I was getting this very steady stream of hormones from the IUD and then suddenly it dropped off and then my body gave me a crazy amount of extra uh, to the point where in the last, um, in the last two cycles that I've had, I have been knocked out for an entire week each time, like with the most pain in my abdomen, but also feeling crazy, like not sure what is reality. And so I consulted with people who are, you know, who know what they're talking about with this stuff and doc- different doctors. And, and the options that I got was I can get it taken out and go completely natural again. And my hormones will take about three more months to equalize. Um, Or I can leave it in and it's going to keep course correcting, uh, which is is a fuck no uh, for me. Um, Or I can get it replaced with another hormonal one. And, you know, I've really felt into this. And after this last cycle, I was like, get this replaced. Like that was my whole body. Like once I became aware of what was really happening, my whole body was like, we want to go back to the Brittany that was before this. Like I, I wouldn't say that I'm more in tune with my body and my emotions right now. I would say that I feel more out of balance with my body and my emotions because uh, on my monthly cycle right now, I feel like I can't tell what is reality and what's not. And also just, oh my God, the amount of pain, like physical pain that I have been in. And I, I'm just looking at around at all the, like when I went to after, <laughs> after I got out and like went to a coffee shop, like I couldn't leave my house for like a week. I was just so wiped out. And then I like went out to a coffee shop and I was like looking around all the women and I'm like, how do you get anything done? How do you get anything done? Like with the PMSing and the pain and the bleeding and the emotional up and down, like how I'm like so impressed by all of the women in society that are allowing themselves to just be like, you know, up and down this way and that way. And also with the, with the fear that anytime you have, uh, you get, you a lot of words, anytime you make love, you could also simultaneously be creating a child. And I was just like, no, 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 no. I have so many things. So for me personally, I have so many things that I am excited to do in the timeline that does not involve creating a child right now. And also needs me to be balanced in my emotions and also my energy and and 
all the things. Like I just want, I, it's like I want my old body back and I want to feel in control of my emotions. And I'm always giving my emotions space and like, you know, having a day off if I wake up and I'm in a bad mood or whatever. But a whole week off, a whole like two weeks of this, for me, this is a fuck no. So next week we are going to go to, Faraday is going to come with me. He wants to hold my hand when I get it replaced and be there with me. We're going to go to a really amazing um, gynecologist in Samui who is a woman and she's very switched on. I've already talked to her and they have it and everything and like everything you everything you need is here in Thailand. It's great and very affordable. Um, we have insurance and everything, but it's actually cheaper if we don't use our insurance. So it's really funny um, because of our deductible. I'm not going to go into insurance. That's not important. Um, but the point is, is this is the birth control that works for me. I really invite you to take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. This is what we say in English, which means like, please take it and filter it in through whatever truth you have for yourself and really ask yourself and ask your body, what do I need in the timeline? Like what kind of birth control works would work for me and listen to your intuition. Even if, (coughs) excuse me, even if your intuition is saying, I want to research this or I want to go talk to a doctor about that. Go do that. Go, t- go talk to, like for me, what makes me feel super empowered is all of the information that I can get my hands on. So whether it's talking to doctors, researching things online, r- searching in community chats of like what helps other women. And honestly, I will tell you that if I based my birth control off of what I find online when it comes to the IUD marina, I would never have one. Because for women where it doesn't work in their body, they have a lot of problems. Like their body is trying to expel it. It's trying to get it out of their body or they have more painful periods. There's, there's so many different ways that your body could reject it. And I am just so grateful that it works for me. It feels really good in my body. It feels stable and steady and everything's working. And I was also wondering, I wonder how many women out there that have the hormonal IUD and they just never talk about it because it's just working and they just live their lives. Um, you know, cause when you go online you see like all the things that are not working and, and then everyone's researching so much of like what kind of birth control they can have. And I just intuitively listened to my body 18 and has been on the same birth control since then. And it's been working amazing. Uh, and I'm just, I find it hilarious that if I haven't, I didn't listen to my girlfriends, I would have probably also had this whole year where I was even creating more things and been more stable in my emotional reality, but everything happens for a reason. And I'm, I'm grateful, you know, I needed to answer it for myself. I needed to ask myself, what would I be like with hormones? And girl, I will tell you, I don't like that version of Brittany because I accept all versions of me and I love all versions of me. And also that version of Brittany that is super high on hormones and not trusting of her reality is not a fun one to be around. And I give Faraday so much props that he has been so calm. I think it actually helps that he's so intellectual uh, that he just kind of like goes into like this like intellectual mode of like, okay, what are your vitals? Like, what do you need right now physically? Okay, I'm going to create a safe space physically because I feel like if he went on the emotional roller coaster with me, I don't think most people can go through that and like survive. Um, and I know Faraday has tons of emotions and I honor that. And honestly, a lot of times I just wanted to be alone because I didn't want to put my emotions on him and I, d- I didn't want anyone else to have to experience this. And so I was like, yeah, I was getting kind of depressed because I was like, I don't want to deal with this and I don't want anyone else to have to deal with this. Anyways, this is my own journey and also speaking up and I've gotten a lot. It's given me a lot of opportunities to receive because there has been so many times over our relationship with Ferdy where I really couldn't, I couldn't think straight. I couldn't do things and he just like took care of me and like handled things. And I'm really, really grateful for him for that. And just to be this amazing man in my life that shows up and takes care of me. And at the end of the day, laughs it off and helps me to laugh about it, even when I'm crying. Um, so I'm calling in a best friend like that for all of you and lover and amazing partner, just like he is, because everyone deserves one of those. And what else came us? Um, 
Yeah. And I also, it's been really beautiful to share about my experience with girlfriends and, and also to own it here on the island because everyone is so into the natural birth control. And I have, it's really showing me like my friends who are switched on because I have friends who are like, yeah, I totally honor you and your process and I honor you and what you need. And also I want to be natural and this is what works for me. And I'm like, this is so beautiful. We can all just do whatever each of us feels comfortable with in our bodies and listen to our bodies. And that's where it's at. Like for all of us to just be in tune with our own bodies and everything works perfectly when we do this. So I, I want I'm speaking this to especially all of you women who reach out to me and ask very specific questions about my birth control or what's working for me and this and that. I hope that this helps you. But my main thing for you is to really sit down, meditate, do whatever you need to get into your meditation, like the zone of like whether it's journaling, dancing, sitting down and meditating, going for a swim, and really ask your womb, ask your body. What do I need right now in order to take care of you? How can I show up for you? <sighs> and then take lots of deep breaths and give yourself the space to feel into what the answer is and it will come to you. It might come to you in the form of a picture in your head of where you need to go next or a question or something to research. Whatever it is, just follow the next step and you will end up exactly where you're meant to be in all ways. This is applying to everything, but we're, I'm applying this to birth control right now. <sighs> okay, I am sending you guys all lots of love. I'm about to go to the beach with Afro for a sunset, and I hope you have an amazing day and get out into nature as much as possible. We are nature, and the more that you are in nature, the more your body is connected to its natural rhythm. So we are not made to live in cities. When I lived in Berlin this last summer, I spent almost every single day in Tiergarten and I still felt so disconnected. So if you're also like sitting in a city right now, listening or watching to this, listening to or watching this, I encourage you to get out into nature as much as possible because you will start being able to feel your body and hear your body and what it needs more the more you're connected to nature. Okay, sending you guys lots of love. Have a beautiful day. Bye.